Alright, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the 2021 Wall Rift Asia Bra, brought to you by Trollvolt.live. All the way in Asia, of course, called Asia Bra. And now we're in the second game between Liab and Burjaya Dragons. Very exciting match one. What a roller coaster ride, emotional ride as well. We're coming to match two. Who are we going to see at match point? Are we going to see just a dominating series for Liab? Or are we going to see a game three? We shall find out. The band picks already started for the game two. So without further ado, guys, let me hand it over to our caster desk, bringing to you by D2 and Xcondro. Thank you very much, Dave. And we <clears throat> are looking at this draft right now. Let me tell you at least three of the bands. We're not sure about the last one, but uh, Leah banned Akali and Evelyn, and Brajaya banned Lee Sin and Mystery. I'm looking forward to this game quite a bit because the game one was very, very technical. Maybe not the uh, most exciting game for a normal audience, but for nerds like us, it was certainly very exciting. Yeah, it was a, it was a really, really exciting game, actually. And uh, we are now loading in for another one. I'm going to keep up both perspectives on um, the two streams that we have of our individual players. Um, so we can kind of see what's going on in the game and hopefully we can... Uh, Hopefully we can uh, keep you up to tabs with it. We are watching from the Liab point of view to begin with. And these compositions, this is much, this is looking much better for a Lulu composition, but uh, sorry, for a, a Misfortune composition, by the way. You've got the, the Wukong to help set up those big bullet time ultimates. So uh, this is much more uh, much more a traditional Misfortune teamfight composition from Liab this time around. Uh, so we're expecting maybe a bit more teamfight presence from these guys in this particular game. Yeah, exactly. Having that Wukong and the uh, Lulu to help in that front line, getting the damage from the back from the re and <clears throat> the misfortune will probably be very uh powerful but we do it looks like have an invade coming out here from Burjaya dragons trying to get in on the side of uh of liab here it looks like a lot of damage is coming onto one of our members looks like brom does go down immediately and i'm gonna actually try to sync my own stream to the stream that i'm getting from dave so we can maybe work this out here yeah, I'm watching from um, uh, Bajaya Dragon's point of view. So I've managed to sync the uh, Bajaya Dragon's stream to the Dave stream right now. Unfortunately, uh, Liab's point of view is much further behind. So I will not, I will not be able to watch from Liab's point of view. I Unfortunately, for, we're having some tech issues on Dave's end where we can't really see what's going on in the game. Um, so I'm just watching from the uh, the Liab personal stream right now with the, the Braum Draven lane as we've got Draven. Uh, an interesting pick, actually, in the current meta. Snowball's really hard, but if you don't snowball, it's kind of useless. Uh, and also, Misfortune is usually considered a little bit of a counter into Draven, because you can just keep using her first ability, her double up, and it's very, very difficult for Draven to trade if Misfortune doesn't get close enough. Yeah, we've seen quite a lot of Draven, actually, um, to mentioning that. <clears throat> and it's just... It, the damage just kind of gets out of control, not to mention his passive and all the gold that he can accumulate here. <laughs> and you, you're starting to see the problem with him, though, because Brom's trying to stay in front of him, and now we have two people trying to chase axes. <laughs> it doesn't really work out too well. Like, Brom's like, where are you going, buddy? Looks like they're just going to go for this, um, or set up this Rift Skull. They've gone for a Gragas jungle, by the way. Super interesting, because I think it's actually the weakest position that Gragas can play in on the map, uh, mainly because his, the gold income's much lower in the jungle. Looks like he flash engages into the mid lane but nothing comes of it we are still looking at a relatively even game state so far there is the draven damage coming through onto the lulu though lulu um is one of those those supports that is incredibly strong a very very strong lane bully but unfortunately she has a very very low health pool so if you get stuck into a trade where you're getting a, a lot of damage put onto you it's quite difficult to trade back you can see like one draven Ooh. basic attack takes away like 10 percent, 15 percent of her hp in one go however draven took a hell of a lot of damage in return yeah, exactly. Trying to chase down those axes really set him back, and he's going to have to go back to that honey fruit to make sure he's, you know, close to topped off, let's say. <clears throat> but Liab Gaming definitely putting the pressure on here. You see that uh, ability, the ability is coming up from Misfortune, just really wailing on both the Draven and even the Braum getting extremely low here. Uh, taking a look at the uh, Leah perspective, looks like Misfortune is out of mana. Probably going to go back pretty soon here, but she's done quite a bit of work in order to make sure that the uh, opposing dual lane is hurting, for sure. So we're just checking on uh, Leah's perspective, going to use that uh, bullet time to clear things out. But uh, in the time being, still relatively even across the board. I reckon a lot of this uh, this game's going to be cracked open 
when we get to that dragon fight, we'll have to see, uh, you know, the dragon obviously being a uh, being the main point of contention in the early game. It's the Ocean Drake, so it's a, it's a pretty big deal. Not a huge deal, but a pretty big deal nonetheless. While we're talking about that, what do you think is the most important dragon? I think, I'm pretty sure Dave thinks it's the Infernal Dragon. But what do you think? I'm. I think it's probably Infernal Dragon most of the time. Yeah, um, just get that damage. I think, I think, the damage. Yeah, <laughs> I think mounting can be good against certain compositions. Um, but uh, but I think for the most part, Infernal Dragon is just that flat damage increase. So it's just it's just really good for that. Um, but I think I think mounting can be good. I think cloud can be good for certain compositions as well. All of all of them are decent. Like I'm never going to pass up a dragon, right? I'm not going to pass it up. You know, no. uh, it's kind of funny because I, if, if I'm not mistaken, I think that they swapped lanes at the beginning, and we had both duos in the Baron lane. Am I am I mistaken? They did, yeah, okay. yeah. We had a double lane swap. Hmm. So now it looks like we have uh, Burjaya trying to take this dragon here. Big jump from the Wukong on. There's the Wild Growth. Lots of damage coming out on the side of Burjaya. He's going to try to get out of there, but there's already a kill on to the Brom, trying to look for more Iris. Kind of a little bit of trouble. Has to back off for a moment, but they're staying strong, trying to get onto them. The Hex that ult comes out to try to get one more kill. They do manage to snag one onto the Gragas. And even more aggression coming out here from Leah. But the Lulu extremely low has to go. But the ult, the long distance fade away from the Draven gets her, knocks her down. And looks like Leah cannot continue this chase. Actually, that's a little bit of a, a worrying uh, position for Liab to be in because they have just given a load of gold over to Draven. He has got all those stacks. He has not died. That's a big gold injection for this Draven now. So they're going to have to be a little careful, even though that fight definitely went in favor of Liab. And I think I much prefer this composition with the Misfortune. You see the power of the team fight. Would say, though, I would say uh, Misfortune Gambit's ultimate placement in that fight I don't think was ideal. I think he was trying to at least apply damage to the dragon and make it harder to be stolen away. But I think if I'd aimed it a little bit further towards the tribe brush, it would have had more genuine impact. However, mm. at the end of the day, they won the team fight. You see the power of the Lulu Wukong in combination with Misfortune. That is the strong 5v5 that we were expecting. That's what uh, you know. I think they would have wanted last game, especially as the game progressed. But it's, uh, again, a good start from Liab this time around. They are looking strong once more. Yeah, exactly. Not only did they get the three to one fight win, they also got the dragon. <clears throat> and really, the only thing, like you mentioned, that's concerning is the farm coming out from our Draven here. Uh, I think that, um, you know, as much as I try to sync my streams, it, it's, it's pretty hard to watch uh, Dave's stream. So I'm trying to like look at my own. I'm trying to sync it. But no matter how much I try, I keep going into the future. For some reason, I keep like, it feels like I'm always a couple of seconds ahead. So if I uh, start predicting the future, I'm not a prophet. I just see the stream a little bit ahead, guys. In any case, <clears throat> we have our teams really just mixing it up here. We have um, Draven and the Brom just kind of hanging around uh, this mid lane at the moment. And. Oh, excuse yeah. me. Just from, no, um, chat, just from chat's perspective, we are watching the Bajaya Dragon's point of view on our streams because, again, we don't have a spectator mode right now in Wild Rift, so we're kind of watching through a screen share that Dave is showing to us, but that screen share is quite laggy and very pixelated, so it's very difficult to tell what's going on sometimes. So we're watching the personal stream of um, Bajaya Dragon's... Uh, uh, actually, my Leah, I think his name is. My Leah is, uh perspective is actually... Um, on time, so I'm just switching back oh, and forth. When, okay, when Dave, maybe, uh, maybe I need to and, refresh and the stream and get perspective my is on Liab right now. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, okay, I yeah, yeah. The stream perspective is on Liab. I've yeah. switched over to Liab now once more, so I've got mine back in time as well. Um, yeah, so uh, it, we're, we're watching Gambit just in the mid lane. He's got that that um, that Guardian Angel, the, the classic first item for a lot of AD carries in the meta right now, especially Jin and Misfortune. Uh, we can see Misfortune now just has that uh, that GA ready to go. It's looking good right now for uh, for Liab. Like they're in a strong position. Uh, I think they're now setting up for this Rift Herald. You can see the Ari and the Wukong posturing around that area. The next dragon spawning in just under a minute's time. So we're going to see yet another likely explosive team fight here, D2. And I am favoring Liab right now. I, 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 the problem with, with Fiora is that she's like, a, in my opinion, Fiora is a worse version of Camille. Because Camille split, push, <laughs> Camille split pushes just as hard as Fiora, but Fiora actually can be useful in team fights. Sorry, uh, Camille can actually be useful in team fights, whereas Fiora is just a bit eh. Like, Fiora is really, her main job is just to be a split pusher. Yeah. It is a uh, dive, well, though, on Camille, what, though. 
Yeah, there's a dive onto her. We saw Gragas kind of sharking around in the area for the longest time. Looks like Camille's getting extremely low. Meanwhile, in this mid lane, we have some pressure here onto the Draven, unable to take him down. Finally, they get the Camille. That took quite a long time, and four members of Brajaya seems like to do so. So they end up getting her in the end. Uh, the ult comes out from Draven to make sure that the mid lane is uh, cleared, essentially. But, you know, in the end, even though it seemed like there was a lot of there were a lot of resources applied to that top lane there, uh, at least from what you're seeing, the, the dragon lane, I should say. Even though a lot of resources expended there, they kind of came out ahead, talking about uh, Brajaya Dragons in that situation. Yeah, I think I think it was a relatively even trade overall, like apart from losing the Camille. The big thing now is what's going to be happening around this this dragon fight. You can see Fiora has like uh, siphoned off back into the Baron lane. She's going to get, again exert split push pressure on this turret. I just think that if you know if we went into a full on team fight here, I, I am favoring uh Liab overall. I just I don't think the team fight composition is as good. I mean, I think Oriana can make a team fight composition in her own right, but the problem is the Fiora is like the sore thumb in this comp. Mm. Like she, she doesn't do um she's not as good as as Camille <laughs> in terms of good. impact in, in the fight. I, I think her split push pressure is really strong. And I think I, I right. think you know her 1v1 potential versus Camille as the game scales up is really good as well. So you know, in terms of pure side lane pressure, you know, Fiora's gonna be able to match Camille relatively easily. But in terms of team fight presence, absolutely no way. Camille is ten times more useful than you know team fight. The dragon has been started though. Fiora is rotating down and Camille is not. So yeah, this looks like Ooh. it could be a good spot for Bajaya Dragons. Yeah, all the members of Berdaya onto the dragon there. It looks like rotations are coming here from Liab. It's extremely low, and it is stolen by the Wukong, able to take it out at the last second there. And the team fight seems to be going their way as well. Bolt time comes up. Big ult comes from, from Oriana, but she falls. Uh, Gragas fell earlier in the fight as well as this continues to rage on. Gambit just using that ability to... A life so get some of that health back and they were just diving this turret trying to get all the kills that they possibly can the ga still keeping this wukong alive even though he hasn't even popped it yet they do get the draven in the end and it looks like only camille fell and i don't even know where she fell actually was he even in that fight but um yeah, yeah, I think uh, she, she was. She had the Fiora ultimate on top of her. We're going to see the fight back mm. again. I mean, that shockwave was beautiful. That shockwave was absolutely gorgeous. But honestly, you're just, just seeing the, the 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 two differentials in in team fight power. Once that shockwave's down, you have a very lackluster team fight coming out from Bajaya Dragons. Whereas this time round, Liab, they can combo their ultimate so well. They've got plenty of team fight CC and disruption. You saw how useless Fiora was in that fight. Like Fiora, absolutely mm. was like a sack of potatoes yeah. in that fight. Her <laughs> ultimate. I don't even think she proc'd a single vital on her ultimate no That's she didn't, like, she like, didn't. You know, exactly <laughs> that, 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 that you're seeing the problem with fiora like she, like if you're playing a team fight game which i think wild rift is very team fight orientated right now uh Fiora is useless. Like she really just isn't that good. I mean, Camille had all her vital points showing. She was completely new, just walking up to them, <laughs> just like, "Come at me, bro!" <laughs> no fear at all. Like, doesn't even matter if you pop her ult. Uh, we're, we're gonna be perfectly fine. Even the misfortune, just running up with absolutely no mana. Like, yeah, I could take this. This this will be mm -hmm. fine. And the the Barons actually started here from Leah. Kind of a dangerous situation. Berjaya trying to come in, big engage coming out here from. From the uh, Gragas, he's going to be kind of focused down, but the damage comes out. He does fall in the end, but already the Arya's dropped. I believe the GS been popped on the Wukong as well, and Liab might have to lick their wounds and go home here. Yeah, that was a little bit uh, overreaching from Liab, in my opinion. They uh, they unfortunately didn't have the uh, the prowess to go straight for that Baron. They they trade one for one overall, and also they stop the Baron from going down because the Gragas has been killed. So you never want to go for a neutral objective once your jungler is down because you risk. Uh, what we saw in the last game, which was just purely a smite steal, but this time it won't actually be a 50-50, it would just be literally a smite steal. Um, so yeah, I think uh, Liab just a little bit overreaching in that scenario, they maybe need a bit more time to set up for that kind of play. Uh, but I definitely think Baron's on the cards within the next few moments. The, the the big objective, I think, for Liab will be the mid lane tier 1 tower. Get that down, push your vision into the enemy side jungle, and then you can set up for Baron relatively easily. The next Drake will be Infernal as well be a big deal for whichever team especially for the team like liab who don't like liab scaling is is okay but uh you know you're going up against an oriana who scales insanely well Gragas scales pretty well as well fiora is a great side lane scaler so i think you know getting the infernal just gives you a bit of a late game insurance policy for for the, the liab composition all right so we are back on the uh liab point of view here we had actually switched over to the Berjaya just to see that last baron fight 
unfold. Um, just kind of switching it back and forth with our producer, Dave, here, on and kind of matching it on our own feeds. But it looks like we have a bit of a skirmish here trying to push in on that all-important middle turret that really gives you that control of the opponent's jungle. Neither team really pushing too far into the, the turrets of the opposing team. So not a whole lot of control that can be imposed here by either Brajaya mm -hmm. or Liab. Oh, big uh, bolt time. Oh, tries to go for the ult there. Gets a decent amount of damage and looks like it's going to continue to try to put that damage on to Brajaya, but they're going to go ahead and back off and this is just mm -hmm. going to be another reset. Well, you can see the power of Braum versus Misfortune here in its own right. Like Braum single-handedly stopped that ultimate from being impactful, even though they did potentially catch up the Draven. I'm also loving what Bajaya are doing with the Fiora. They know that she's not particularly strong in these team fights, so constantly sending Fiora to the side lanes to be a nuisance, uh, pulling the Camille away from these team fight situations as well, making the uh, the team fights a little more even into strict four v four. We have a a dragon opening up here, though. All oh, the engage comes through. Yeah, they they were extremely low, but at the cavalry coming in here from Leah makes sure that Braum just completely evaporates, even though he is such a big boy. Here comes the ultimate coming out from the Camille trying to continue that damage. The stasis comes out to try to keep them a little alive longer. Camille able to get out with the kill and her life in the end. That is a 2-4-0 in favor of Leah. Obviously, we have the Fiora pushing bot, but I think that Leah will take that one. Yeah, you'll take a you'll take a single tower for Infernal Dragon any stage of the day. And this is the prop and this is the problem that I have D2 in general with split push compositions. I don't think you have enough time in Wild Rift to really play a true split push composition. I think the game's too fast paced and I think the team fights open up too quickly. Like the time between objectives is much, much shorter in Wild Rift compared to traditional traditional League of Legends. So these kind of like these split push ideas that you can have, they're so difficult to execute on because you never really get the time to do them properly. Unless you are like insanely ahead of your opponent. Yeah. And also uh, the fact that the map is the carry on. Sorry, just to add to your point um, from the perspective of other mobile games. Uh, in Wild Rift, kills give you so much more an advantage compared to um, the other objectives, right? Just um, as far as, you know, turrets are concerned. It's actually much easier to take turrets in other games. And so in this game, split pushing isn't quite as uh, powerful because it's not quite as easy just push down a lane uh, as quickly as you can in other games. And so, it, you know, you can see that not much was done by Fiora uh, in exchange for what was taken back here from Liev. Exactly, exactly. And I think that's one of the problems I have that I actually genuinely think that the tactical strength of a lot of a lot of champions, like like I said, Fiora in, 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 in League of Legends PC, Fiora is a meme. Like she 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 literally only split pushes. So when you pick yep. her, the enemy team knows exactly what you're going to do. We've got to, I'll talk about it later because we've got a fight breaking up. Yeah, exactly. We have the Brom trying to come in, gets the ult off on only the misfortune, but no real follow up. Looks like there's going to be an ult popped here. The wild growth goes out on the Irish. She's actually going to try to go back in, makes wants to make full use of that ultimate, that big boy ultimate use on her, but unfortunately not able to get a really good engage. Both teams just kind of. Trading tit for tat, but no kills. Both teams looks like they're going to back off in the end. Yeah, it was actually a pretty poor team fight from Liab overall. They executed it very, very badly. The Misfortune Ultimate wasn't there. Ar Ari got caught, uh, had to stasis and then ult away. Yeah, and they lose mid lane tower for it. Really lovely punish from Bajaya Dragons. And uh, yeah, not 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 the best team fight selection there. And again, going for Baron very risky to do so when you don't have a massive advantage. I understand why they went for Baron D two. They saw the Gragas. They saw a lot of people on the top side of the map. They thought they could get it down quickly. But the response from uh, they they go for it again. Are they asking for trouble? I mean, they they're taking, they're taking it down relatively quickly right now. Yeah, unfortunately, we're, we're on the uh, Berjaya perspective right now, so I don't think Berjaya really knows what's going on. We'll, we'll, I'll tell you what's happening from the Aaliyah perspective as you guys watch that, but it looks like the Wukong's able to take it down in the end. If Fjord tries to come in and get some damage and does get the GA pop here onto one of the members of Liab, but it looks like the revenge, the counterattack is on. Gragas goes down, Braum goes down. This is already a 2-4-0. You see uh, Fiora fighting in that bottom lane against, I believe that's Camille. Wukong's going to go over and try to help the situation and uh, I'm not they actually do take out Fiora in the end so that is a 3-4-0 that is a Baron and that looks like a massive lead here for Leah potentially game ending I think it could be game ending they've got a massive man advantage uh, it's so difficult to clear these Baron waves especially as uh, something like a, a, an Oriana oh they're going to play it safe though 
They're playing mm. it safe. They're going to run it by the, what we call painting by numbers in League of Legends. You just, <laughs> just go down every lane, go down every lane, kill every turret, take every inhibitor. That looks like what uh, Liab are going to do here. Just try and be a bit safer about it. Um, Wait, but yeah, so I kind of want to return to that. It, what sorry, color is the on, bottom they, turret? Sorry. What is the color of the bottom uh, turret? If they're painting by numbers, uh, <laughs> I don't know, like uh, yellow. Yes, yellow. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I want to return to the early discussion that we were, we had um, D two, which was interesting because I I genuinely think a lot of uh, league champions have a very specific identity. I, okay, mm -hmm. we're not going to have this discussion because we've got a Baron fight. Like, <laughs> oh, <Baron fight>. good. <laughs> it all looks like a very one-sided Baron fight because the immediate flash over by the Wukong, or it could have been his third ability, I don't really care, but because it was absolutely massive, they demolished Burjaya, and this will almost certainly be the end of the game this time. Absolutely. They're going to get this easily. Game over. 2-0 for uh, Leo. And you can see when they draft a more traditional team fight comp, they are much stronger in their fights around these neutral objectives. They had one bad team fight around that first Baron attempt, but everything else was really clean from Liab overall. And uh, you can see the strength of, this, uh, the, strength of the way they played it. But I, I actually would love to bring Dave in on this discussion that we're having. So yeah. I think it was an interesting discussion. Um, I feel like there are a lot of champions in League that have a specific identity about what they can do. Like Fiora, as I said, she's always traditionally been known in League of Legends as a pure split push champion. She doesn't she doesn't do well in team fights, and I think that's I think that's very similar in Wild Rift. Uh, I, I, is there a problem? Do you think, Dave? Uh, do you think there's a problem where the, the the identities of champions just aren't good for competitive right now because things like split push doesn't work very well? Um, like personal. Okay, so. The same thing can be said for many heroes, right? That can be used for a split push. Like, what about Yasuo? Of course, yeah, no, no, not, not, just, not just Fiora, not just Fiora, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah like, like same, same thing can apply to a lot of heroes that, that's really good at split pushing, but just completely kind of useless in team fights. Uh, same as Jax, right? One on one, there's almost no one can beat him. But then if you if you put him in a team fight perspective, like he becomes, you know, like just kind of kind of weird. Same similar here, like. I don't know yet because the game is so new in Wall Rift. We are still exploring the meta. Yes, the split pushing, the game pays a lot faster compared to PC. Yes, Wall Rift, a map is a lot smaller than PC. You have a lot less room for you to split push while uh, putting pressure and then go across to the other side of the map. So the enemy team have to respond and now all of a sudden you have a number advantage in team fights. Um, it's, a, it's a lot harder to pull that off, but with faster pace, it also means maybe your team can just play more aggressive. Maybe you're looking to invade the jungle at the same time. I think it's just because the game is so new. Because we, we've seen this mm -hmm, in many mm -hmm. other mobile MOBAs as well. Like When they try to pull off mobile uh, try to split push strategies, um, it takes a while for people to develop that. Because if you want to do that, you're also trying to play a much like fat, more awkward pace games. Are you gonna like just completely split push like on both side, or are you gonna split push on one side and just do the four one, um, and then just try to invade the other side because you know you're strong. So you can do that in multiple different directions. So I, I don't know. I can't give you a, a definitive answer for a comment. On your one thing. I no, yeah, I I, th I think I think that's a fair assessment. I think essentially you're looking at the fact that it's a very new game, and traditionally when a game comes out and it's new to people, they will just team fight because it's the easiest and yeah. most natural thing to do. And it, 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 split pushing takes. Split, split pushing takes much more coordination to make work. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I completely get that. Just, I, I'd love to see it developed. I really want to see it be a thing because I like breadth of tactics. I don't want the game to be dominated by which team fight is better over exactly. and over again, you know? Exactly. Well, then, the, go ahead. The developers certainly made it so that uh, 